by doing math. And that's what we're going to do here tonight. We're going to learn how to do a little bit of math, use that grams per cylinder, and figure what, what does that mean to that particular engine, a 4 liter, or a 5 liter, or a 1.8 liter, okay? And then we're going to look at some other data PIDs that are available today to kind of let you give you a, uh, a sanity check on that number, okay? So inside the controller, one of the items here that has to be defined is cylinder volume, okay? So we've got, on this one here, whenever you're looking at or doing this equation we're going to be talking about, we want to factor against liters. We're going to use metric, okay? So when we look at that, that says cylinder volume in cc, you're going to want liters, that you're going to want that number in liters, okay? So it'll be a decimal. And then this one will be 0.713, okay? All right? So that's for this particular engine. We look at, you know, we've got this 2001 Silverado. This is what we're going to be looking at. It's actually 4278 cc's. And you basically, all you need to do is divide that by six, because we have six owners, and that comes out to 0.713, okay? Before I get too far here, just one other thing on, this is inside that calibration. This uh, B0120 says RPM threshold for airflow calculation. Remember I said earlier on GM, they use the map sensor uh, speed density at low speed. That is that threshold right there. So anything below 4,000, dominance is looking at the, the map sensor. So if you've got, a, you've got a GM car that uses dynamic airflow, which is what this is called, and it's got a fuel trim related problem and you're focusing on the mass air meter, you need to be looking at map sensor related vacuum leaks, maybe something going on with volumetrics, 